Ding, 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 new intro format. Let's see how this goes. Hello, class. My name's Tomato Anus, also known as Pizza Nips, and this is a segmented any percent speed run of Super Mario Ocity. Trying a new format with this, haven't done this whole walking microphone thing since I last streamed or since that Doom Eternal video forever ago. Anyway, this run is done by Tyron18, the current world record holder for this category, who also helped me write the script to make sure I'm not spreading fake news. Over the span of 14 kingdoms, Tyron is going to collect 124 moons by doing a platform as Mario. The game opens with a cutscene of Chris Pratt losing to Bowser and losing his hat in the process, big sag, but Mario is a new best friend now. It's important to note that this run was done on version 1.3 of the game, which was released in 2019. That's a, that's a good year, it's before the dark times. This version got rid of some glitches you can do to save time, but it has way faster loads, and overall saves around 10 seconds with current strats. Also, this one was suggested and chosen to be covered on this channel by my patrons. Look at all those sexy names. Man. Wow. Woo! Hot. You too can suggest and vote on runs to be covered in future videos, but more on that near the end of the video. Anyway, uh, what's, what's going on with Chicago and Minnesota guy now? Previously on Tomato Anus. Gavin Beth Chainsaw Hands, you're under arrest. Did you install a bees drawer? I think I'm having an existential crisis. Minnesota guy, I'm out of jail oh, and- Oh, Gavin, welcome. Do you need water or anything? That'd be lovely, actually. Okay. Guessing you're here for revenge. Figured you probably would. Would you do me a favor and open that drawer labeled bees for me? I'm actually here to do two things. Make amends and talk about Watcher of Realms, a next-gen mobile fantasy RPG. Oh, uh... It's a game with over 100 unique heroes with 3D models with motion and facial capture from 30 different races and 8 factions. Each one has a unique backstory that you uncover as you explore chapters, maps, and levels and try to save the chaotic land filled with madness. The heroes are all upgradable too, with the game featuring character gotcha, hero development, and upgrade mechanics. I'm gonna have this water too now if you don't mind. Man, I was really thirsty. You have no clue how much jail makes someone really, 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 really thirsty. Anyway, Watcher of Realms is totally tactical too, with you having to carefully choose the best faction and hero combinations, and also engage in totally original tower defense PvP modes to climb player rankings. Plus, the game has an exciting launch event featuring two influencers where you choose which one to support and compete against the other team, where you get a chance to win rewards such as an iPhone or Switch. Let me guess, you can download Watcher of Realms by using the link in the description. Not quite. You can download Watcher of Realms by using the link in the description or scanning the QR code on screen. That makes sense. Oh, you said to open this bees drawer, right? No, wait, actually don't ah, open that. Not bees, I thought it would be actual no, bees. No, I struggle with homophones. All right, so Super Mario Ocity is a super movement heavy game and there's a lot to it. To simplify, I'm gonna speed run through explaining a bunch of movement stuff right now and have definitions pop on screen for whatever's on screen. So like, here's a sample definition for something on screen. Then later on when that stuff is reintroduced in the actual run, the definitions will pop back up to jog your cute little mind. All right, here we go, we got our timer. Ready and go. First off, most basic, Mario can jump, double jump, triple jump. No definitions needed there. He's literally jump man. You can also do backflips, side flips, and dive. I don't think any of these warrant definitions either. Jumps aside, the main mechanic of this game is Mario's new hat, Cappy, who you can throw to capture things, which, believe it or not, is called a cap throw. Ah, I hate this dude. I hate this dude. Bad vibes. Bad vibes from Cappy. There's a lot to cap throws, so more on them in a moment. The fastest form of ground movement is rolling. Technically, Rocket Flowers and Moon Kingdom are faster, but generally rolling is fastest. While you're rolling, you can perform a roll boost by pressing either X or Y, or by shaking your controller. A roll boost just makes Mario roll faster. However, you can't roll boost as fast with X or Y, so Tyron is gonna be doing a lot of controller shaking this run. There are several ways to initiate a roll, such as pressing X or Y while crouching, or pressing them while crouching after a ground pound. But the method Tyron will use most is a spin pound. Spin pounds are done by spinning the stick in two full circles, jumping, and then crouching. This instantly accelerates Mario to the ground, as opposed to stalling in air like with a ground pound. Spin pounds save around a second each time you do one. Water break. You mostly use them when you're on flat surfaces. For the most part, they don't really save time on slope surfaces like in the dunes of the Sand Kingdom. I hate sand. 
So back to rolling, rolls are fast, and ideally you want to preserve that fast momentum after the roll ends, which is what a roll cancel is for. Roll canceling lets you instantaneously cancel a roll with a cap throw, which when done right, preserves your momentum from the roll. They're done by pressing X and A at the same time, or Y and B at the same time while you're rolling. Or alternatively, you tilt your controller in the direction you want to throw the cap and press A or B after that motion. So roll cancel, preserve momentum. Another thing that preserves momentum is a clap fire. If you roll down a big slope or drop off of something while rolling and stop holding crouch just before finishing the slope or just before landing, you get a speed boost. So clap fire puts a fire under Mario's ass after rolling off of something or down a slope. Getting back to some more simple things, you can wall kick, you know, kick off of walls. Pretty straightforward stuff. Let's get back to cap throws now. When you throw cappy, there are multiple ways you can be thrown. Normally, up throw, down throw, or spin throw. You can just shake your Joy-Cons in the direction of the throw and Cappy will go that direction, with spin throws being shaking to the side. The only caveat to this is that you can't down throw with a Pro Controller. Shaking down with a Pro Controller does what's called a motion control cap throw, which is pretty much a normal cap throw, but it comes out one frame earlier. Anyway, you can throw Cappy multiple times in a row, and doing it three times in a row is what's called a triple throw, believe it or not. Triple throws have a faster animation than a normal throw, and Cappy travels quicker and reaches his max range faster with a normal throw. Because of this, if you need to do a normal throw but you have the time to do two throws beforehand, it's beneficial to do a triple throw instead of a normal throw. Also, when you do a cap throw, you can shake your controller and Cappy will fly back to you faster, and he flies back even faster when you do a triple throw. So when you throw Cappy, you can hold him in place by holding X or Y, and if you then jump on top of him, you get extra height, and this is called a cap bounce. Funny enough, if you do a motion control cap throw, oh look at that, definition. If you do a motion control cap throw and Cappy hits a wall, and then you do a cap bounce on him, you get even more extra height. You can also combine a roll cancel with a cap bounce, which is called a roll cancel bounce. These are super useful for crossing distances without sacrificing speed. So if you throw Cappy and have him return to Mario, and jump as soon as Cappy returns, you get a cap return jump, which also gives you a bit of extra height. In fact, cap return jumps are a bit higher than a double jump. Cap return jumps also preserve momentum, so they're super handy for crossing gaps. God, there's so many things to go over. Let me look at the script. Oh, we're almost done. You can also do what's called a rainbow spin, which is pressing A or B as soon as Cappy returns to you in midair. This causes Mario to spin in air, which resets his fall speed and stalls him in the air for a moment. Speaking of stalling, there's also something called a cap stall, which is where you throw Cappy into a wall and then do a wall kick, which gives you a little more height. Alright, let's finish this section with two simpler things. First is that if you throw Cappy on the ground and then roll into him, you perform a vault. If you roll boost into Cappy, Oh look, another uh, another definition. If you roll boost into Cappy when doing a vault, you get even more distance, which is called a roll boost vault or a power vault. Power vaults are amazing for covering a lot of distance when you don't have the space to perform a triple jump. And lastly, whenever Tyron lays pipe in the run, I mean enters a pipe in the run, he'll do it by either rolling in or ground pounding in, since the entering animation is slightly faster that way. Time! Huh, not bad, not bad. Not bad for a first go at this. Alright, so with the building blocks of the run covered, let's move on to the run itself and get back to the normal format. Let me know how you like this format though, if you want me to do more green screen explaining things. I kinda wanna make more props, but I couldn't make any props for this run. Before starting a new file, Tyron sets his Switch's system clock to 7 minutes before Daylight Savings Time for a trick called Daylight Savings Time Abuse, or DSTA for short. Just over 6 minutes into the run, he's going to plant a seed that takes 20 minutes to grow. By waiting 42 seconds before starting the run, it's timed out so that his system clock will hit 2am right after planting the seed. Daylight Savings then kicks in and his system clock springs forward to 3am, causing the seed to grow immediately. The window on this is pretty tight. He can only lose 11 seconds through the first 6 minutes or so of the run and have DSTA still work, otherwise daylight savings happens before he plants the seed. You might have also noticed that Tyron's game is in traditional Chinese, which overall has fewer text boxes and less text in the boxes. This reduces the amount you have to mash through text, and in any percent saves around 15 seconds. After starting a new file, we begin with Mario laying face down ass up, and Tyron is going to do a spin pound after gaining control to begin rolling immediately. Again, spin pound is a fast way to begin rolling and saves a second each time you do it. Just watch Tyron's input display to see him spin the stick. He begins rolling around at the speed of sound since he's got places to go and has to follow his rainbow. He triple jumps up here after letting his roll end, which preserves his roll momentum as he triple jumps, and he skips the cutscene that plays on this bridge where Cappy becomes Mario's drip, so things like cap throws are now possible. After triple jumping up 
up these stairs ahead, Tyron does a roll cancel to maintain rolling momentum as he dives past this lever he activates and he then presses R3 to enter first person and skip the panning animation for this bridge rising up. When he regains control, he begins rolling immediately and rides the waves of this bridge, then Tony Hawks the rail for style points before jumping as he interacts with the door to preserve momentum. When he loads in, he Jesus rolls by rolling as he falls into water to cross it and then performs his first capture of the run by becoming Froge. As Froge, he does vectoring, which is shaking the controller before you land and changing direction midair to move forward at alternating 45 degree angles. For some reason, the game gives you more speed in air if you vector and you get more speed every time you do it. When he exits this area here, he's going to do his skip called left side where he triple jumps off a hat, then cap stalls and wall kicks to reach the top and skip running all the way around the right side of the big hat. This saves two seconds. He fights Topper here, one of the brutals, and starts by throwing Cappy to knock hats off him and jumping on him to hurt him. He correctly picks which hat Topper hides in, then Cap throws and jumps on him again to damage him and skip the last phase, wrapping up the fight. Tyrant tried to grab a few coins during the fight, since coins are important for the run since he'll be buying moons later. He buffered some jumps to get closer to the wire where he spin throws to capture and become light, officially finishing up the tutorial kingdom. Worth mentioning, Tyrant uses a Switch Pro controller for this run. You can use Joy-Cons if you want, which actually saves a second due to a down throw strat way later in the run, but Tyrant prefers the Pro controller due to his hand size. So we and Mario are now arriving to the Cascade Kingdom, which is a prehistoric dinosaur-themed area with a waterfall as the main landmark. Tyron rolls normally here because the surface isn't flat and spin pounding doesn't really save time. After using a chain chomp to break a rock and get his first moon of the run, he's going to do a skip called Dino Skip Skip, which skips a skip called Dino Skip. Dino Skip entails you capturing a T-Rex and bouncing off a trampoline with it. Instead, Tyron skips that by doing a triple jump off this rock, cap bounce, cap stall, wall kick, jump on the flat part of the wall, and wall kick to get up here, then triple jumping and wall kicking off the ribs to get all the way to the top of the kingdom. Dino Skip Skip saves 11 seconds over Dino Skip, with Dino Skip already saving 30 seconds itself. He now enters the boss fight against Madame Brood, biggest damn rabbit I ever seen. Right away, he spin throw roll cancels to knock off Chain Chopakin's hat and spin throws again to capture it and blast the big mama in the face. Tyra needs specifically 100 coins by the time he reaches the 5th kingdom, so he collects some more here. He then throws and holds Cappy to the side and backflips when Chain Chompikins comes out so Mario hits it and stops it, then Cappy knocks off its hat and he throws Cappy immediately again to capture it and hit Jessica Rabbit with. This sequence saves 7 seconds each time you do it. Once Tyron blasts her in the face a third time, the fight ends and we have to watch a cutscene of her exploding into stars before Tyron can grab her multi-moon necklace. This gives 3 moons, bringing him up to 4 total for Cascade, and to move on to the next kingdom, you need to have five. To get the final moon he needs to leave, Tyron is going to perform a chest clip. When he gains control after the cutscene, he's going to spin pound and roll over to the waterfall where he'll enter an alcove with a chest in it. When he opens the chest, he has to wait a moment for the moon to fly up, so he'll jump on top of the chest during that and turn around to face the camera. He's then going to backflip, and when Mario's feet are above the moon as it's spawning, he's going to throw Cappy forward, opposite the direction of the moon, which skews Mario backwards and clips him through the ceiling as he grabs the moon. The game doesn't know where to put him when he does this, so it pushes him backwards and gets him solidly out of bounds inside the wall. He'll then just cap throw up and cap bounce to get back in bounds and complete the chest clip. Once back in bounds, he throws Cappy to the globe to unload all his moons and wrap up Cascade Kingdom. This unlocks Theosity, which is Mario's airship and method of transport between kingdoms. Believe it or not, it's also shaped like a hat. The moons that he's collecting are power moons, which are used to fuel Theosity. So I typically like to try and recap a game's story as we progress through the speedrun, but this game's story is super light. Pretty much Bowser kidnapped Peach to marry her and kidnapped Tiara, Cappy's sister, to be Peach's wedding Tiara. We chase Bowser from kingdom to kingdom as he collects items for the wedding, like a dress, a cake, not, not a pie filled with doves, a soup, and a bouquet. We're now arriving at the next kingdom, Sand Kingdom. Kingdom, which is the one I mentioned earlier where spin pounds don't save much time due to the uneven ground. So Tyron is about 5 minutes and 50 seconds into the run, meaning that we're rapidly approaching daylight savings time. Once he rolls down this hill into the small town, he'll grab the seed I mentioned earlier that takes 20 minutes to grow and bank it into the pot off the building. He then goes inside to grab a moon behind the counter. While he's inside, his switch's clock hits 2am and DST happens, so the game thinks over 20 minutes have passed and when he goes back outside, the seed has fully grown and he can spin pound spin throw to get to it and collect its moon. Side note, being inside when DST happens skips the seed growing animation. 
He then dives to the roof of this building and enters this pipe where he's supposed to find the moon here by following the rumble of the controller, but the moon is always in the same place. Just like it is for us who subscribe to the lunar-centric model. After rolling out, he'll do a cap bounce to get on a Russia building and collect his fourth moon. So there's a bird that flies around Sand Kingdom on a cycle and is always in the same place when you exit the pipe, and the bird releases a moon when you hit it. He'll roll cancel into a triple jump and does a triple throw rainbow spin to stall on air before up throwing Cappy to collect the moon. At the crest of this dune, he's going to collect another moon that you're supposed to find with Rumble, but again, it's always in the same place. He'll then dive, roll boost, and do a clap fire by letting go of ZL at the end of this dune to stop rolling, which preserves and gains a bit of speed. Quick pause, you can't escape me. Tyron will throw Cappy into this ice to get a cap return jump immediately. He'll then cap bounce and dive right after to get another cap return jump. He'll then do what's called a charade bounce. A charade bounce is when Cappy's close to a wall, and you're close to Cappy before you jump off of him, and it gives more height than a normal cap bounce. Alright, I'll walk away now. So again, up here he throws Cappy into the ice for an immediate cap return jump, then after diving in another cap return jump, he charade bounces to the ledge. Here he power vaults to the moon. Tyron is then going to triple jump cap throw dive onto the wall up ahead where he'll do a dram strat. He'll backflip and cap bounce onto the corner of the building to spawn a bullet bill off screen, and up throw Cappy and hold him in place, then collect the moon and return Cappy while diving. The bullet bill is following him, and Cappy's positioned to capture it, warping Tyron to the bill. Essentially, using Cappy to strategically capture something right after getting a moon so you warp away is called a dram. After the cutscene of spawning this moon, he recaptures the bill. He boosts repeatedly with it to quickly reach this moon that's over here on this pillar kicking rocks, and he's going to do a spin pound to start rolling after collecting it. So you're supposed to go through a bunch of stuff inside this building up ahead to reach the top, but Tyron skips all that by doing a roll cancel, triple jump, cap return jump, cap stall, and dive to reach the top. He hits the neighboring chest with Cappy to get 50 coins, and does a roll cancel off the ledge to get more speed. He holds Cappy in place off to the side while doing a triple jump here so he can do a triple throw to get up to this moon. Tyron is looking down right now, make a mental note of that. Another bullet bill just spawned off screen, and by moving to the left here while Cap throw wall kick diving to get up here, the bill is manipulated into hitting this block which saves time over capturing a bill. After this moon, he's going to turn his camera back to normal as he goes to collect the moon from a herpes ward on the ground. The camera shenanigans have been for a platform that moves whenever you look in its general direction, and he's been manipulating its movement this whole time so he can do platform clip. What up, Pizza Nips is back with another pause. To start the platform clip, Tyron is going to grab the ledge as the platform is moving towards the wall. He's then going to let go as the platform reaches this dot. After letting go, he's going to go neutral on the stick and do a neutral cap throw, and then begin holding towards the wall to wall slide, and then when the platform finally reaches the end of the track, Mario gets pushed inside the wall. Alright, peace, see you later. Inside the wall and out of bounds, he's able to head over to this moon and collect it while staying out of bounds. While still out, he moves towards the Sphinx to enter it from the rear. As he collects the moon here, he uses Cappy to collect a few more coins on his way out. Outside, he makes his way to the last moon to collect, where he'll buffer a spin pound while he's moving so that when the roll ends, he presses A slash B, then ZL to spin pound immediately and get the moon. As soon as he lands, he warps back to the Ossity where he spin throws the globe to unload all of the moons he's collected and power the Ossity back up. Side note, what the fuck is with this look Cappy gives Mario here when he unloads the moons? Like, seriously, what is his deal? Does he have a grudge against Mario or something? <sighs> it's alright, Tommy. Don't get worked up over a fictional Cap. You're okay. Just goddamn are his vibrations off. Alright, so anyway, right now you choose between two kingdoms to travel to next, lake or wooded. Speedrunners choose to go with lake first since it's the first option in the menu and requires less menuing to select. All you've got to do is mash to select it and not go down or anything. Tyron skips a couple cutscenes as he arrives to lake kingdom and he begins holding and moving left while the final cutscene is skipped. There he'll buffer a spin pound in a specific spot to reveal a moon, and sets up a cap throw while waiting for the moon to be interactable. He then spin pounds into Cappy to vault, and is going to capture a zipper up here to unzip some wall. 
There he'll do a triple jump clip, where he spaces out a triple jump so that Mario's feet are above the moon as he collects it, and does a cap throw to the opposite wall in the process, which, similar to the clip in Cascade, causes Mario to skew and clip through the far wall. Out of bounds, he up throws to hit this checkpoint while he has it on screen so it's actually spawned in, and down here he cap throws to open this chest and get this moon that's typically only available after this kingdom's boss fight. This skips the boss fight and saves around 15 seconds. He then warps to the checkpoint he just got, where he buffs offers a spin throw which makes the game think Mario is in air for a split second so he can immediately dive to get closer to the moon. This saves 0.2 seconds. He rolls off this ledge and ground pounds into the water where he does a single breaststroke to reach the next moon. He's then going to cap throw to capture the cheap cheap and use it to swim over to blue Yonka Dingo to get a moon. He then swims down to a pillar where you're supposed to ground pound on top to release a moon, but shaking the controller is cheap cheap counts. He's then going to enter the underwater air pocket area where he'll jump over the pond and turn around so he's facing away from the wall he lands in front of and the camera resets to face away from the wall too. By then entering first person, the game no longer thinks the wall exists, letting him talk to the mermaid to get the moon from her without having to go inside. This is called a camera clip, and this one saves 0.1 seconds. After grabbing this moon, he warps back to the Ocity where he'll unload all the moons he got here. Jesus, we were only here for two minutes. And he'll then travel to the Wooded Kingdom. Man, I'm about to be the first person to go to jail for killing a hat. So when he arrives at Wooded, pay no attention to the fact that his coin count is going to be different than what it currently is. Just a side effect of the fact that this run is segmented, it doesn't actually impact anything in the run. He just has fewer coins now. Right away he's going to begin rolling to the left where he stops his roll before a rock so he can grab it and not roll into it and knock it away. He jumps in a specific way to manipulate this bunny and hit it to spawn a moon, then throws the rock to hit this rock to spawn another moon. After diving to collect the bunny moon, he goes up to talk to the robot at the shop and enters first person real quick while doing so to skip the camera pan animation and buys the first moon of the run. He buffers a spin pound to begin rolling, then looks up to spawn an enemy as he does a triple jump and shrain bounce to reach the ledge up here. He does a second shrain bounce to get up here where he captures the uproot he spawned by looking up. He jumps while leaving the uproot spawn to gain a little speed, and will use the uproot to get up here and bust a nut. After diving down here, he's going to roll forward into the river where he'll roll cancel and cap return jump on his way to a ledge. There he's going to do a side flip, then a neutral cap bounce to reach a ledge with a nut. The reason for cap bouncing neutrally is you actually get more height if you bounce off of cappy without holding a direction. Anyway, at the nut, he's going to do nut clip. I have to say this all the time, but we're going to be mature about this glitch's name in the comments. To do nut clip, he's going to up throw to bust the nut, and then do a back flip. Mario is then going to be on top of the moon after it spawns in, which, similar to chest clip earlier, pushes Mario backwards through the wall. Alright, adios. After nut clip, he'll do a backflip and shrain bounce to be able to get up to a moon hidden in the wall. Man, that's hard to say. Normally, you need to destroy the wall after beating the boss to get to the moon, but you can grab it by just doing a long jump towards the camera. He then does a cap throw install to get back in bounds, and he's not supposed to be in this area yet. He gets enough rolling speed to be able to time three jumps and reach the top to dive over the railing, roll cancel, and dive spin pound this nut to get a moon. Getting to this moon this way instead of using rocket flowers saves 30 seconds. He long jumps off the ledge here to fly straight to another nut that he's going to bust. Side note, it's because of this kingdom that I had to be sure to not cover this run during November. After capturing an uproot up here, he'll enter a side platforming section where he's going to shake while growing to grow faster, and he'll then ejaculate again. He drops down and dives out of the capture and buffers a spin pound, then roll cancels and cap bounces to reach this railing where he roll boosts, then roll cancels to keep momentum. On the ledge and around the corner up here, he's going to then triple jump to get enough height to cap bounce to break another nut.
He'll then dive on the high up incline he's by to get a couple roll boosts in before heading back to the piranha plant. He's supposed to kill the plant, but he'll instead perform flower road skip by triple jumping off this railing, vectoring in air, and triple jumping after a roll cancel to get to this platform up here where he breaks another nut. There are story elements tied to the piranha plant, and skipping it means that Tyrant can't fight this kingdom's boss anymore, so he has to replace the three moons he'd get from the boss with three others. So here he does a roll cancel bounce to cross this enormous gap while vectoring. Inside, he'll capture another uproot and do another little speed boost when leaving its platform, and then does some quick platforming with it to reach and crush another nut like he's into CBT. Tyron is going to collect one more moon up top here before uncapturing and heading outside where he'll perform Spewertless Wooded Skip, with Spewert being the boss I mentioned a little bit ago who won't spawn in. Tyron will spin pound and go off the edge, then spam A and B to buffer a jump and skip the stunned landing animation, which he then chains into a triple jump, cap throw, cap return jump, charade bounce, and cap return jump before breaking this nut for a moon. He only has two moons left in this kingdom, and after rolling over here, he ground pounds to sink in the water quickly and enter the flooded pipeway. He gets to this first moon on a fast cycle by doing a quick cap bounce, wall kick, dive, spin pound, and does a triple jump clip when collecting the moon like he did in Lake Kingdom. He then just cap bounce dives down out of bounds to reach this last moon. As soon as he collects it, he then warps back to the Ossity where he dumps all his moons and is then able to progress to the next kingdom. The next stop in the pursuit of Bowser is Metro Kingdom, which Tyrant selects here, although the flight gets interrupted by Bowser himself, who stops the Ossity and forces Mario to land in Cloud Kingdom. This kingdom is strictly a boss fight against Bowser, and he's, uh, he's dressed in his finest duds for his wedding, huh? As soon as he gains control after exiting the Ossity, Tyron will buffer a spin pound and is going to jump off of a cloud thing that expands when you land on it to get a cloud boost, which saves around a second. Once he starts the fight, he'll long jump straight at Bowser as he throws his hat, which lets Tyron capture the hat immediately and start fustigating him right away. He turns his camera while hitting him because once the hat pops off, he'll run that direction and spin pound in a specific spot to reveal a Luigi hint art that gives 200 coins, which he needs since he's going to be buying two more moons later. Tyron triple jumps as he runs back towards Bowser to jump clean over the white hat and Cap throws to grab the hat as soon as Bowser throws it. This instantly skips a phase of Bowser going around and throwing shit at you, letting you get a good drubbing in. When Bowser goes to the next location, Tyron rolls up to him and intentionally takes damage from the white hat. This is so he has invincibility frames and isn't hit by any of the other hats while doing the quick grab on the white hat. After one more volley of punches from our favorite Italian pugilist, the fight is over, and in a cutscene that Tyron skips, Bowser knocks Mario and the Ossity down to the Lost Kingdom. So the Ossity, she's been rode hard and put back wet, and Mario has to collect moons to fix it. Tyron skips a cutscene and cap stealing enemy by doing Meme Tree, which is where he triple jumps to this tree, vaults off this palm, and cap bounces to get to this ledge. Here he roll cancel bounces to get to this moon in the ground here. He then dives up here, roll boosts, and triple throws to quickly hit this butterfly and get another moon, followed by spin pounding down to this floating cross to get another one. Another one. He spin pounds when he gains control and triple jumps over to the other spinning cross for another hidden moon while throwing Cappy. This is so that afterwards he can dive back to solid ground and cap return jump to get the moon in the tree. Tyron then goes near Klepto while avoiding his trigger zone, cueing Klepto's music which counts as you getting Cappy back, skipping that entire cutscene. Told you I'd be back. After this moon, he'll throw Cappy at this enemy, prompting the enemy to aim at him with Cappy and launch Cappy back. Tyron will drop down to... <laughs> I'm out of breath from doing like 30 takes of me jumping in. <sighs> Tyron will drop down during this and collect this moon, then jump into line of sight of the enemy, causing Cappy to fire back at him. When doing this, Tyron will position his camera so that the enemy is off screen and doesn't exist, despite it still firing at him. With how Tyron returns to the edge, the enemy's hitbox will spawn back in just in time for it to hit the specific block that the moon is in and not the other blocks that are in the way. This saves two seconds. Scott Kramer.
After this moon, he's then going to throw Cappy at another one of the enemies who launches Cappy back as part of a trick called Cage Triple. After throwing Cappy, he triple jumps off a palm and lands on a lip next to this cage, luring the enemy over to destroy the cage to get the moon. He then spin pounds and rolls to get the moon under this bridge, and up throws, holds Cappy out, cap bounces, and throws Cappy to get back on solid ground where he can then wrap up the Lost Kingdom. Man, what is Cappy's problem? Is he mad that Tyron didn't let him go for a ride with the big ass bird? Like, fuck this hat, dude. Anyway, with the Ossidy repaired, he can now finally head to Metro Kingdom. Once he's arrived and gains control, Tyron spin pounds and gets rolling right away, and after two triple jumps, he captures an electric wire to move to some solid ground. Instead of rolling down the intended path, he jumps off an awning and Shireen bounces to reach the top of this building. He then triple jumps and cap stalls to get up top where he long jumps to reach a moon. He rolls off this ledge and cap bounces to make it all the way over here to reunite with the intended path. After riding the electric wire up, he spin throw roll cancels, does a couple roll boosts, and heads inside here where he's going to do a skip often referred to as Goomba Fuck. This is where he spin pound, roll cancel, triple jumps to skip a cycle and reach this platform, which saves a second. He does multiple backflips and shirane bounces to reach this pillar that he wall kicks repeatedly to skip most of this 2.5D section. Up here he jumps out towards the camera out of the 2.5D section and cap bounces to get up to this chest that he opens for a moon. Tyron then long jumps out towards the camera, cap bounces, and clears the gap all the way to this doorway where he hits a checkpoint outside for later. He rides this wire up and uncaptures early at the top to skip riding to the finish and steps on a specific part of the tower to trigger the cutscene of a boss fight. This fight is against Mecha Wiggler and after hitting its head first, he blasts the body twice to hit all of the points of interest and end the first phase. Between phases, Tyron positions himself in his camera to try and manipulate Mecha Wiggler to move as little as possible. Starting in Phase 2, this becomes an RNG-based fight since there's 22 possible patterns and positions it can do. Unfortunately, there's no known way to manipulate those, so you just have to learn every pattern. In this run, Mecha Wiggler started in bottom right, meaning it can do either the Z or Tetris pattern, and in this run it did the Z pattern. Tyron reads this movement and is able to quickly blast all of its body parts, and you can then see it make the shape of a Z afterwards, hence this being named the Z pattern. After giving Mecha Wiggler an extra large clobber and topped with everything, the fight ends and Tyron gets to collect a multi-moon. So Metro is the kingdom with the highest moon requirement at 20, and completing this boss fight unlocks the day portion of Metro, where there are more moons available. You're supposed to spend this kingdom helping Pauline the mayor assemble a band and do a whole parade thing, but Tyron will be skipping all of that unfortunately. It's unfortunate because we skipped the absolute banger that is Jump Up Superstar, but really it's actually fortunate for me, because I hate parades. They're long and boring, and you only ever watch them when you sleep at your sister's on the couch before a holiday, and then wake up and it's on TV, and you're just like, Welp, this is my morning now until holiday festivities. They're always just so uninteresting, unless someone gets accidentally sewn into the pants of the big Charlie Brown. Then it's hilarious. So here, Tyron collects a moon while doing a dram to capture the electric wire, and once he's over to the mainland, he rolls up to a moped that he's going to use for a trick called Scoot Clip. The well has already run dry on ways for me to enter frame. Rather than unethically take control of a human being just to drive his cute little RC car, Tyron will abuse the fact that the game thinks you're holding left if you tilt your controller left. By riding the moppet to the side of this moon's cage and both tilting his controller left and holding left on the stick, Mario tilts far enough left to collect the moon through the cage. Totally unrelated, clipping through cages like this reminds me of Halo 3's Rat Nest where you could drive a mongoose next to the fence and then hop off and then you're inside the fence over here and you're just like, ooh, I'm gonna get two kills here before I get killed and then die five more times trying to get behind the fence. Alright, back to the run. Tyron then bounces off this awning, and up here he's going to dive into some trash and grab this piece of garbage. He 
He then captures and flings off this pole to soar and land perfectly next to this guy who gives you a moon for just sitting next to him and listening to him talk about how when you're living in the city, you know you've got to survive. Up here, Tyron will then spin throw to break this crate and enter this girder area where he'll roll and roll cancel to get the moon at the end here. He buffers a spin pound after diving out of the girder area, spin pounds again, and enters a gambling area. Anyone reacting to this on Twitch, quick, minimize the window. By spin throwing left immediately, he hits all moon symbols and wins a moon, and dips out of the casino after collecting it. Okay, React Andes, you're all safe. You can pull the video back up. Outside, he flings forward here and rolls into this building up here with a 2.5D section, where you're supposed to do a bunch of wall kicks. After wall kicking off the wall a couple times to climb up, he then wall kicks away from the wall and cat bounce dives to reach this platform and collect this piece of garbage. Once he crosses the gap again, he spin pound jumps for extra height, cat bounces, and up throws while diving behind the bullet bill so that Cappy double hits the bill to both remove its cap and capture it. After a few boosts, he grabs this moon and warps to the checkpoint he got in Night Metro before the boss fight. He's going to triple jump in Vector while in air to reach another dumpster, but this one has a scenic view of one of the monstrosities I built in Polybridge. Tyron then blindly dives back towards the camera to perfectly fall into and capture a moon he passed earlier in Night Metro that he skipped to collect now. He'll then capture the nearby wire and ride it all the way back up, where he'll tilt the camera face down as he does several backflips and a few charade bounces in a row to reach a moon. Since his camera is tilting down, the moon comes on screen earlier as he's climbing, and it's for sure spawned in when he reaches the top. He then spin pounds and falls down to collect this moon above the pool. After this moon, he cap throw dives to the left to land on the railing and start rolling to get a little bit of extra speed as he falls. He vectors a little before beginning a ground pound super high up to land on a hidden moon. He then dives down to enter this building where he'll enter a room with a ton of people where he's supposed to hit a nearby lever and collect a timer challenge moon. Instead, he does reverse people room where he spin throws the lever and triple jumps off a garbage can, vectors to gain distance, bounces, cap stalls, and dives to grab this pole where he swings backwards to grab a moon up here. He then spin pounds and roll cancels off the edge to quickly reach the other moon, which he grabs while he's on the ground so that he can immediately warp afterwards. This is called reverse people room because you're supposed to collect the moons in the opposite order Tyron did. This wraps up the Metro Kingdom, and man, what is Cappy's deal? He keeps giving Tyron that look this Cap is just begging to get throat punched. Like, have I ever told you all what I would do if I ever met E.T.? Because this is what I'd do if I met E.T. Now just imagine what I'd do if I met Cappy. Anyway, when Tyron gains control in Snow Kingdom, he'll start rolling and drop off a ledge and do a clap fire by letting go of ZL just before he hits the ground to get a speed boost. He starts rolling again and after doing a couple quick polar plunges, he rolls up this slope where he talks to a hidden Keegan-Michael Key to get a moon. He rolls down this slope then and roll cancels to get a little extra distance on this jump here so he can make it cleanly over a hole that he ground pounds into. When he loads in, he turns around and will spin pound to get a bit of extra height on a jump as he jumps on top of these boxes to get a moon. He roll cancels here as he jumps off this umbrella and double throws to reach this pathway up here where he opens a chest for another moon. He'll then roll down this path to the next moon where he'll do Snow Clip. This is where he backflips over the next moon so Mario's feet are above it when he collects it, skewing Mario out of bounds, and Cap throws ground pounds to make sure he's fully out where he crosses a gap to enter a different area. This saves one second. This area has a handful of blowy joeys, and Tyron moves a little slower to make a specific cycle. He triple jumps off this block as the blowy joey on the left is blowing it so that he gets extra speed with the jump, letting him get on this wall to spin pound for a moon. He's still on a cycle because he wants to capture this blowy joey between blows, and after spin throwing to plant his flag in the war on Christmas, he captures the blowy joey and blows all of the spinies off the ledge except one. He hits this one off the ledge manually so that the camera doesn't have to pan as far to reveal the story moon he just unlocked.
When he leaves this area, he's going to begin rolling to the right instead of heading to take out the boss of this kingdom, Johnny Depp. In this area, he'll continue his war on Christmas by saying happy holidays to a Goomba and beginning to stack them while vectoring his jumps as he moves around to build up speed. He'll walk under a shadow to trigger a block to fall down, then capture this Goomba who is having intrusive thoughts before then capturing the fourth Goomba and shake jumping twice in a row to reach this four Goomba button where he uncaptures and dives to reach the moon. He then roll cancels, which gives more speed on ice due to its properties, and triple jumps to be able to cross this gap to the next story moon. Once he returns to the Kingdom Hub, he heads backwards where he'll roll cancel into a door to enter a shop. Here he buys his next moon from a safe distance and will warp back to the Ocity where he'll perform a trick called Snow Dram. He'll jump on top of the Ocity while throwing Cappy so he can then do a double throw and holds Cappy in place as he vaults and begins vectoring left, cap throws, cap bounce, vector right, rainbow spin while vectoring left, and cap throw to barely clear the gap. Here he opens a chest to collect the moon that's typically only available to you after you complete the game's story and saves around 10 seconds or so. He then roll cancel bounces and vectors to get back to the Ocity where he unloads all the moons to wrap up Snow Kingdom. So in the story, Mario's testicles are incredibly shriveled at the moment due to the cold and all. In order to unshrivel them and get him back to being Big Ball and Mario who's capable of defeating Bowser, he decides to head to Seaside Kingdom which is pretty much a beach kingdom. This is canon. I actually recently had a trip to the beach as well for the same exact reason. So when Tyron gains control, he spin pounds and barely squeaks in a triple jump before the cliff face where he shirain bounce wall kicks up. He buffers another spin pound, cap bounces, and wall kicks to then get this moon. He then drops off and clap fires as he enters this pipe where he'll spin pound to reveal a hidden moon before exiting again. Tyron will enter an alcove up here in motion control cap throw to get extra height on his cap bounce, then long jumps and cap bounces off an up throw to get this moon. Once he gets back to the beach, he'll roll to the water and roll cancel bounce to capture a cheap cheap. He presses Y and B to boost over and over and will enter an alcove with a chest where he'll do fish and dips. He swims behind the chest and swims down and into it to bonk a couple times, stops boosting and just holds forward, and when the chest opens, the lid pushes him out of bounds where he can then swim up here and collect the moon from out of bounds. Tyron will then swim up to this moon ahead and collect it from out of bounds and will swim up to an underwater mound you're supposed to ground pound and boost into it from underneath, which frees up the moon that he boosts back in bounds to grab. He then swims up to Purple Yonkadingo, who he's tried to keep on screen as much as possible so it swam to a closer position, then swims left to hit all three of these mounds with boosts to spawn a moon. He's then going to perform Fish Clip, which Tyron feels is probably the easiest clip in the game. He uncaptures the Cheap Cheap alongside an invisible wall, Cap throws past the wall, recaptures the Cheap Cheap while Mario is far away from the wall, then just boosts downwards to clip out. Here he captures this moon and then enters another Sphinx room from out of bounds to collect the final moon of the kingdom. Tyron then warps back outside to the Ocity where he feels the sunshine and it brightens up his day and he unloads the moons and will head to the Luncheon Kingdom next. Mmm, cap you mofo, mm. When Tyron arrives at luncheon, he buffers a spin pound and begins rolling before he even fully loads in. He roll cancel, double throw, cap bounce, cap stalls to get up here and collect this moon, saving 3 seconds of movement in the process. He'll then roll off this ledge and pass by some cousins of mine before cat bouncing across a gap to grab a moon in an alcove. Pause time. So you're supposed to fight Spewart here, the guy who Tyrant skipped fighting and wooded. Man, is Spewart sexy. 
Wait, is Spewart supposed to be a kid? Maybe I shouldn't make that joke. Instead of fighting him, Tyron is going to perform Spewartless to skip him again and save 11 seconds. The Spewart boss arena is here, and it has a trigger zone that extends a decent distance out from it. Tyron will spin pound, roll cancel, and triple jump off this corner, then vector in the air and stay as far right as he can. He'll then cap bounce and vector a little more, and land on this green slope as far to the right as he can, because if he lands too far to the left, then he'll hit the trigger and the fight will initiate. He can then roll into this door and skip the very slow boss fight that would only give one moon. Uh, pause is over now. Spewartless has implications as the story doesn't progress anymore in this kingdom. This means Tyrant can't collect any of the quick story moons and has to get other moons that are a little slower. Despite this, Spewartless still ends up saving time due to the boss fight being that slow. After grabbing this moon, Tyrant does a roll cancel while cutting this corner here and buffers a spin pound outside before backflipping and rolling on the jagged geometry of the green rock formation. Here he roll cancel bounces left, double jumps, cat bounce, wall kicks to get this moon, and Twitch streamers minimize the tab now, we're frickin' gambling again. <clears throat> this one has 5 symbols to hit quickly instead of 4, so it's a bit harder, but with hard angling and direction changing, he's able to hit them all with a spin throw. Okay streamers, it's safe, you won't get forced to stream on kick if you tune back in. Outside he triple jumps past the stew that's a Bruin and cat bounces to get this hidden pillar moon here. He spin pound roll cancels off the ledge and vectors to this island and cat bounces to this other island where he spin pounds the salt to get another moon. Because he didn't fight Spewart, the potaboos that you capture to traverse the liquid don't spawn, so he has to damage boost here. He tries to avoid damage boosting in general, since the health refill animation when you collect the moon loses you 2 seconds. Since he was forced to damage boost, he backflips up here and spin pounds to reveal a heart, with Cappy collecting it on his way back to him so he doesn't lose time next moon. After blazing through these captures to climb, he shakes to get a bigger flick right here so we can skip straight to this moon up here. Terran then cap bounces back to this moon over here, finishing up this forking room. So you're supposed to capture a potaboo here, but since they haven't spawned, Terran is going to jump, up throw, cap bounce back, wall kick, and vault over the lava. There he'll cap bounce and vector to clear more distance, then cap throw and dive while briefly holding backwards. This makes his jump fall short and causes him to hit the lava. That's intended though, I promise, because then he's going to cap bounce, dive, and damage boost again to reach the other side. Um, how do I transition out of this pause? <laughs> Once he clears the lava, he'll backflip, charain bounce, cap stall, spin throw, dive and grab a golden turnip that he'll throw real quick so he can grab a moon, and note the time loss from healing when grabbing this moon. He'll then yeet the golden turnip down and roll after it, grab it, and do this fucking crazy flip with it and throw it, then pluck another golden turnip that he grabs while long jumping before throwing both gold turnips into the stew to get two moons. After collecting the moons, he'll roll cancel into the nearby shop and roll cancel again inside to get up to and talk to the anthropomorphic fork and buy a moon from it. God damn it, I should have said anthropophorkic. Fuck. Outside, he spin pound jumps, cat bounce, and breaks a crate with Cappy to free a moon as he dives towards where it goes. Tyron will then jump over the blue rocks behind him where he can't progress normally due to the story not progressing. To remedy this, he triple jumps and vectors as far out as he can to hit some hidden blocks that he long jumps off of to reach here where he vaults, double jumps, and cap bounces to get this moon back here. He'll throw Cappy before collecting the moon to set up a cap return jump which he'll perform as soon as gaining control. 
He then spin throw roll cancels to quickly enter the door around this corner. In here, he'll capture a Potobu and platform up with it. After going up these steps, he shakes to boost forward and eviscerate my cousin to reach this area without uncapturing where he jumps up and grabs this moon. He then jumps down here and shakes to constantly boost up to here where he uncaptures and collects this moon. Tyron now warps back to the Ossidy where he'll spin pound, double jump, cap return jump, cap bounce, and roll cancel to activate the timer challenge. He then wall kicks his way up to the final moon he needs and lands on top of the scarecrow timer to get Cappy back, then unloads his moons in the Ossidy. Right now, Mario and Cappy, fuck that dude, are on their way to Bowser's kingdom, but Bowser steps in again and says hold up by causing the Ossidy to crash in the Ruined Kingdom. Ruined Kingdom is pretty much just a boss fight kingdom that's an auto-scroller for speedrunners since it's a pushover of a fight. But, did you know that this kingdom is Dark Souls? How crazy is that? And I'm pointing it out to you! Anyways, Tyron will just walk around to avoid attacks and then purposely take damage when he goes to cap throw the prongs on the dragon, and will do that a couple times to defeat it. It's not much of a fight since you know he's the fighting freak Mario when we're at Dragon Hill. While he clobbers the dragon here at Dragon Hill, I'd just like to say that I hope you're all doing well. If you're not, then please, as I say in every video, please remember that how you're feeling does not define you nor the rest of your life. You have value regardless of any feelings of despair or dread you might have. There is a tomorrow, and one day you'll be able to look back at where you're at right now and those horrible feelings and thoughts, and they'll just be memories of where you were at this time, rather than who you were, because again, you are not defined by those feelings. There are brighter days ahead, and how you feel right now cannot take those days away, and it can't take tomorrow away either. Please always remember that no feeling is final and you can get through whatever you're going through right now. You are far stronger than you think. I say pretty much this exact thing every video. I have the same sayings I always fall back on, but it's a message that's worth repeating. There was a time in my life when I got by day to day by thinking about how there was a tomorrow. That was literally all that kept me going. While things have never been as bad for me as they were then, it's still something I tell myself when I'm going through difficult times, and I think it's a mantra worth sharing in case there's anyone out there who watches this one video of mine and needs to hear it. So again, please remember that there is a tomorrow and no feeling is final. Getting back to the run, now that Tyron has taken out the Dragoon from Shrek the Halls, if you watch his inputs, he's buffering a triple jump to grab the Multimoon during the cutscene ending pan. After unloading these moons into the Ossidy, he'll be able to finally head to Bowser's Kingdom, which is the penultimate kingdom in the game. I'm gonna fucking murder this hat, dude. So we're now actually arriving to Bowser's Kingdom. There's no moon counter for this kingdom since the game is trying to trick you into thinking it's the final kingdom, but you do actually need 8 moons here. Two of the moons Tyron will get are just random ones he'll pass, while the other six are going to be story moons. So after triple jumping off this rail, he spin pounds to get on top of this guy from the Big Book of British Smiles, who he jumps on to just shatter into a million pieces, like, Jesus Christ, calm down Mario. After collecting this first of the six story moons, he has to watch a quick cutscene, and the game has now progressed to the point where all the necessary things to complete the game have spawned. After a quick spin throw, roll cancel, triple jump vector spin throw, he rides over to a big new island where he has to collect 5 shards to get a moon. When he gets there, he'll roll around a corner and do a cap return jump before down shaking to cap throw to capture a shard. After cap throwing right, he cap return jumps and collects a shard here as he wall kicks on top where he throws Cappy for the 4th shard. He then does birdless where he stands in a specific spot, throws Cappy, and spin pounds to trick this bird into hitting the bomb into the block to reveal a shard instead of capturing the bird with Cappy. Once the shard is collected, he adjusts his camera and collects the story moon that spawns from the shards before skipping the cutscene and progressing. He'll then do the Bowser Dram, which is similar to the other drams, where he'll throw Cappy towards the electric wire up ahead and hold Cappy in place there while he goes to collect the moon, and will then have Cappy capture the wire so he instantly warps to it. He holds down and right while riding this wire so that Mario faces the proper way when he arrives so he can then instantly roll to the next wire and save a second. 
This brings Tyron to a boss rush where he'll have to fight the Brutals. He's going to perform Sarbamba against the first Brutal, Harriet, where he'll throw and hold Cappy in a specific spot while Harriet throws two bombs. Cappy hits the first bomb back, and Tyron times out hitting the second bomb so that instead of blowing up when the first one does, it'll float in midair while he runs up and long jumps her ass. Tyron then hits Schrodinger's bomb at Harriet while she starts up her next phase, which instantly hits her and leaves her open to get stomped on. He's then going to throw Cappy underneath her while she flying saucers again so that the bomb bounces back up. He moves and looks in specific spots to set up and throw Cappy here where he'll throw Cappy with perfect placement to hit the first bomb she throws right back into her face. After slamming her one more time, we see her disappear from existence and possibly hear her elusive Mamma Mia line. Mama Mia. Guys, she did it. Did you hear her say it? That's like a 1 in 50,000 chance. The next boss is a rematch against Topper from the game's opening, who leveled up his game by buying more hats. Pay to win mechanics at their finest. After the same first phase as before, Tyron dives into Topper and spin throws to topple Topper over for Tyron to just jump on him. He again jumps on the hat Topper goes into, then dives and spin throws to knock him over so Tyron can jump on him as he's sniffing the ground like it's Madame Brood's chair. This blows up the second Bowser idol and spawns the next moon, which he's going to spin pound and long jump to go get. This unlocks more of the kingdom, and when the cutscene ends, Tyron is going to do a skip called Pipeless. Straight ahead past the birds, he's going to triple jump around a corner and break some crates to get the last story moon he needs. Instead of entering the nearby pipe to get back on track, Pipeless saves a couple seconds by Cap return jumping and Cap throwing at a spiny so Cappy comes back immediately, and Cap return jumping right away so that he gets up here and doesn't need to watch the slow pipe animation. After Cap bouncing up here, he captures this little pecker who he's going to use to climb a giant wall he can't get up otherwise. When he climbs the wall, it's faster to stay to the left side due to less walking to get to it and the fact that the rotating circle is moving clockwise. At the top, he'll uncapture and roll forward to an electric line that'll take him to the top of Bowser's tower where he'll initiate the Mecha Brutal fight. In the fight, you're supposed to wait for a little pecker to fall and use that to climb the mech, but instead he can climb the bubbles on the mech's leg by backflipping and cap throwing multiple times. He'll do that to climb up and spin pound on the Chuck E. Cheese globe window containing Festus, which will send Tyron flying off the mech, but he'll cap bounce and dive to get back on. The game will launch him off it again before he can do any more damage, but he can cap bounce and dive to get back on where he spin pounds Topper's Chuck E. Cheese dome. After rainbow spinning to stall a moment before diving back on the mech, the mech throws him off again, but he can just cap bounce and dive back on. During this phase, you can't hit anything or deal damage, so Tyron manips the mech by standing in spots where he doesn't really have to do any positioning maintenance and just kind of rides out this phase. He then positions himself behind Harriet's Chuck E. Cheese germ pit and crouches to set up a backflip, and as soon as the mech stops, he flips and ground pounds to send her flying. He then does a newer strat called Fast Target Acquired where he goes near where Harriet was, which pushes him to the side with Spewart so he can dive straight to him and spin pound him immediately. Overall, not using the bird in this fight and just being insane at this game like Tyron is saves 40 seconds. There's then a cutscene where we learn the Brutals have become fireworks in the afterlife, and after collecting the multi-moon, he's done with this kingdom. After the cutscene plays out, he roll cancels to the Ossity to unload the last of the 124 needed moons. And now, we've got a wedding to crash. So the moon has moon gravity, meaning movement is a bit weird here. Thankfully no werehogs up here though. He begins by rolling and will triple jump to cross this giant gap up here, and on the moon he vectors pretty much all of his jumps, otherwise he'd lose speed in air. Up ahead after the nuisance of a string of rotating rocks, Tyron is going to grab some rocket flowers to have Mario run around like he ate some intense curry last night. After the rocket power runs out, he does Moon Cave Skip, which is the biggest skip in the run and was found on day one after the game released. He spin pounds off the Sphinx, Charain bounces, wall kicks in a specific spot, goes away from the wall to gain more height, and dives in a specific line that doesn't bonk Mario and lets him cap throw again where he can make it to solid land. This skips the bulk of Moon Kingdom and saves about two minutes. Tyron is now making his red carpet debut and rolls up into the chapel ahead to interrupt Bowser and Peach's wedding by objecting to say something mean.
Tyron skips the couple cutscenes, which brings him to the ultimate fight against Bowser, where he roll cancels to stop Bowser's hat and has Cappy return to him and hit Bowser's hat onto Mario. This skips a phase and lets him mollywop Bowser right out of the gate. This fight is more or less the same as the fight back in Cloud Kingdom, except Bowser has a new trick or two. He now breathes fire between phases. It's, uh, not really much of an issue to deal with, though. Once Bowser hops back here, Tyron is going to backflip over the correct hat and cap throw to be able to enter it, and after pummeling Bowser and dodging two swirls, he then has to dodge even more of Bowser's fire breath. Again, you, uh, don't really need to do much to dodge it. This brings Bowser to his final phase where there's tons of hats, and Tyron, like earlier, intentionally takes damage from one so he doesn't get messed up when trying to backflip over the correct hat. After punching Bowser's ass, metaphorically, although I wish literally, and dodging multiple swirls this time, Bowser gets knocked out and the moon starts to explode, as was written into their prenup. Tyron is now going to roll up to Bowser and capture him with Cappy and finish out the game as him. Bowser just wrecks shop. Absolute brick shithouse. Tyron is going to keep his movement here tight and try to move in straight lines with as little deviation as possible and shoot fireballs preemptively to break things in advance. After knocking down a bridge up ahead, he's supposed to enter a pipe and do a 2D section, but nah. Instead, he's going to do the hardest trick in the whole run, 2D section skip. Fitting that the hardest trick is at the very end. Pretty much the 2D section isn't all 2D, it's layered, like an onion. There are parts where 2D section meets with 3D section, and you can land on those. I'm back for one more pause section. So since you can land on the parts where the 2D section and the 3D section meet, Tyron is going to jump and land on one. From this small ledge, he's going to jump to the side and claw attack to stall in air. While doing this, he holds up and left so that he then lands on another spot where the 2D section and 3D section meets, which is pretty much just an invisible ledge. He'll then jump up around the corner and claw again to land on another 2D, 3D intersection. He's then going to zigzag left and right while climbing in this fashion, and near the top, he'll jump straight up to land on one last 2D, 3D intersection before making it to the top. Alright, I'm gonna... Uh... Go buy cigarettes. Bye, kids. Go into the liquor store. After performing 2D section skip, he shoots fireballs constantly ahead of himself to break a series of walls in the way, and will then attack a golden wall to enter the last area of the game. He has to destroy four pillars in a central thing to finish, and he buffers a fireball by holding Y so that he can start shooting the pillars as soon as he gains control. He breaks the pillars in a specific order, starting with the front right one, and he'll go clockwise to end in the back right since that's the fastest order. Each pillar takes five fireballs to break, and when he's aiming at the pillars, he wants to hit them in the middle since if he hits the pillars in the side, it doesn't always count as a hit. You can tell if a fireball hits a pillar by if the screen shakes slightly. After destroying the last pillar, he has to destroy a gold block in the center, so he's going to mash claw attacks for it and stand still while doing so since you actually attack faster when standing still. Once he destroys the block and then jumps and claws the wire, he becomes electric, and the run officially ends when the screen shakes as they blast off. So the run officially ends right... Now. Welcome to the outro. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much on behalf of both myself and Tyron. Additionally, thank you so much to Tyron for helping me make this video. This guy is just a maniac at Mario-osity. I mean, you guys saw all this stuff he did, right? That was insane. If you guys want to check out more of Tyron's stuff, I've linked his YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter in the description. And he streams Mario-osity runs regularly on Twitch, so... I don't know, maybe go tune in, catch a world record live, who knows? Real talk though, Tyron was incredible to work with with this video, and I cannot recommend checking out his channels enough. Additionally, if you want to learn more about Mario-osity speedruns, then head on over to speedrun.com. There's links to a ton of resources on there, and also a link to the community's Discord server, so that's a great place to ask questions if you have them. I want to also say thank you to the people who made this video possible. 
my patrons. Man, I'll never get over how sexy those names are. This speedrun was actually chosen by my patrons to be covered in a video. They suggested it along with a bunch of other games, and they were all put into a poll, and they all voted on which ones they wanted to see most. And you can help pick out future videos, too, by heading on over to patreon.com slash tomatoanus. For as little as $3 a month, you get access to videos early, your name in the credits, updates on videos as they're being made, and the ability to participate in polls and vote on future runs to be covered. If you're comfortable with chipping in a little more than $3, then you can also get access to monthly live Q&As, a monthly retrospective where I look at an old video of mine and talk about what it did and didn't do well, just try and learn from my previous work on how to make my future videos better and more engaging and more better at explaining things. More better, that's not better? I lost my train of thought. Um... Oh, I got it. Monthly retrospectives where I go back and I watch an older video of mine. Like last month in June, I went back and watched my Fallout 3 Any% percent Speedrun Explained from 2018. Yeah, that sounds right. I watch these videos back and I take notes in a notebook about what the videos do right, what they don't do right, how things could be better explained, how things could be better portrayed, visualized, all that kind of stuff. Just trying to become better at making videos by looking at my past videos. And if you support at the highest tier, you can also get access to a monthly recap I do where I take a bunch of notes through the month and at the end of the month I sit down and I talk through pretty much all of the projects I'm working on and I talk about the production on them, how things are going, how things came to be, what things I did and I didn't like in final products, all that kind of stuff. I just kind of deep dive on everything I'm working on and everything that I've been working on in this past month. So if any of that sounds of interest to you, head on over to patreon.com slash tomatoiness, but it is entirely, entirely optional. You do not have to feel obliged to give any money to me at all, but man, Think about how sexy your name would be up here too. In all seriousness, thank you again a million times over to everyone who supports the channel on Patreon. It seriously makes me making these videos possible. And uh, lastly, as always, join the Tomato Anus Discord server. Toma uh, wow, that's not the right link. Uh, Discord.com slash tomato anus. We've built an incredibly welcoming and inclusive community there and just always welcoming of new faces. So if you want to join a Discord server to just chill and chat about anything, doesn't even have to be speedruns. Like, if I'm being honest, we barely talk about speedruns there. Then head on over to Discord.com slash tomato anus. But this is the best channel, by the way. The dog's wearing clothes. I like this one. But yeah, that's that's all for this video. Please let me know in the comments how you guys like this newer format I'm doing, any feedback you might have, ways to make it clearer, better, more entertaining, just let me know. Additionally, if you like the video and you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe, you don't have to, you can leave, I don't care. I actually care. Subscribing is a quantitative way for me to gauge people's interest in the video though, so if you enjoyed this video and you're not subscribed already, then subscribe, or not. I. No pressure, no pressure, just do you, do you. That's all for this video though. This was a segmented any percent speedrun of Super Mario Osity. I've been Tomato Anus, and I hope you have an above average day.